For one episode of the Woodsmith Shop TV show, we built this carpenter style toolbox. What's nice about it is that it's a portable way to carry some tools with you when you have to work outside of your shop. One of the downsides of a toolbox, any toolbox really, is the large open space. While it seems versatile, it's really easy for it to turn into a cave and all kinds of stuff can get lost at the bottom. You end up not even knowing what's in there. So I want to show you a way that you can organize your tool, this particular toolbox, but frankly any toolbox, by making a tray that slides in the top. Now when we made this, we put in these hardboard runners on the inside, and that's what our tool tray is going to slide on. Now the length of it is going to be about half, maybe a little bit longer than the inside of the box. That way you can leave it in place, slide it back and forth, and still get to the stuff that's stored below. What's more critical is the length of the two end pieces on the tote. You want those to be able to slide easily into the toolbox and rest on those runners. That way when you slide the tray or the tote back and forth, it's not gonna bind. So once we have these pieces sized, the next step is to cut the joinery. And for that, we're gonna use the same joints that we did on the toolbox and make some box joints. To cut the box joints on our tote parts, I'm gonna use a box joint jig here at the table saw. Now this is a shop made one. There are commercial ones available. If you want, you can find a link for the plans for this jig in the description below. Now what a jig does for you is two main things. I'm using a dado blade to cut a quarter inch wide kerf on the ends of my pieces. The jig then will allow me to space those kerfs consistently across the width of my pieces. That way when the ends and sides made up, it'll be a nice tight fitting joint. Now to do that, I'm gonna start by using the long sides and align it with this key on the jig. Then I'll make a kerf with the dado blade, and then I'll take that kerf and slip it over the key and repeat the process. Once I'm done with the side pieces, I'll tackle the process for making the box joints on the ends. The long sides of our tool tote started with a finger. Now the opposite piece, the ends of the tote, needs to start with a slot. The simple way to do that is to use one of the pieces that we already cut as a setup gauge. Here's how it works. I've marked the bottom edge of my long side pieces, so I'll flip it around and slip it over the key. Then I'll align, again, the bottom edge of one of the end pieces and slide it up to it. Now you can see how the side is acting as a spacer so that that first cut is gonna be a slot on the ends. Then it's just like before, where you use the key on the jig to register the end as you step your way down, making the box joints. Okay, it's time to assemble the main box of the tool tote. Now I've taken care of the box joints on the corners, but then there are a few other steps that you wanna do and you need to do before you can start assembling. And the first is to head over to the router table and cut a pair of dados on the long sides of the tool tote. Those are gonna hold a set of dividers. So once I took care of those, that way I could dry assemble the sides and the ends and then figure out what the length of those two dividers are gonna be. Now you need to know that length because what you'll need to do then is to cut another dado that's centered on the length of those two dividers and that's gonna hold the handle that we're gonna add in just a little bit. Now, at this point, I'm ready to glue everything together. What I really like to do with box joints is, you know, the main benefit of them is just how much surface area you have for glue to go in there. The problem is, is actually getting glue in that space. So what I'll do is take my glue bottle and I'm just gonna run a bead of glue across the ends. That way I can bring the piece that it's gonna fit into, and as I press them together, that's gonna spread the glue across all the glue surfaces. It's a pretty quick and easy way to do it. So, 
take care of that on the other side. And then across the raised ends here. The big thing when you're gluing this up is to make sure that you keep all of your bottom edges aligned. Uh, what you don't want to do at this point is to have a piece get glued in upside down, which could throw off the final fit of everything. The other nice thing is that we're working with pine here, so the joints can kind of mush a little bit and compress. So if you have a nice snug fit, you'll be able to still get things together. So what I want to do is I'm going to dry fit these dividers just slightly into the opening for right now. And that's going to help keep the tool tote square as the glue dries. Now, as you can see, there's probably a few places where I'll want to just give it a little, uh, little gentle persuasion and maybe add a couple of clamps just to bring things together. But then I'll take those clamps off and let the glue dry up. The glue is dry and the clamps are off on our tray. The next step now is to add the bottom because we're going to need to be able to hold some stuff in here. Now the original plans for this tray called for cutting a groove for the bottom over at the table saw. And since it's all glued up, you really can't do that. The other reason that I like doing it at the router table here instead is that when you use a table saw, you're making these through grooves the whole length of the pieces. What ends up is that in one of your box joints, you're going to get this little gap that's formed where the table saw blade passes through. Then you got to come back and fill it after assembly. It's not a real big deal, but it's just one less step that I really don't want to deal with. So by doing it at the router table, I can have everything all glued up and create a small pocket, a rabbit in this case, for the bottom to fit in. The bit that I'm going to use is called a box slotting bit. It's by Lee Valley and it looks like a really tiny slot cutter. And they come in two sizes, one for eighth inch wide grooves, one for quarter inch wide grooves. And then I've set it with a piece of the hardboard that I'm gonna use for the bottom to set the bit height. So what I do now is just a matter of turning on the bit, setting the box or the tray in place, and then running it around on the inside. The bit's gonna leave rounded corners, and I'm gonna come back a little bit later and clean those up with a chisel. All right, we're ready for the final assembly on our tool tote here. And it's gonna go in some stages. And the first thing to do is to install the two dividers. Now you remember that they'll fit into the dados in the sides, and they also have a dado cut down the center to hold the handle that we'll add in just a little bit. Now I size these to be a little bit tight, just because I want the best fit possible. Now for a complex assembly like this, I really like using liquid hide glue because it gives me a lot of open time to get parts assembled. But in addition, it also lubricates the joints a little bit so that I can leave the dados still pretty snug and the hide glue is gonna help me get those pieces together. And then I'm just gonna use my uh, uh, shop made micro adjuster that John made. And what I'm looking for is for that divider to be flush with the bottom of, or the upper surface of the rabbit that we routed in the bottom of the tray for the, for the bottom. I'll just do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now the next step is to install the handle. Now there's a couple of steps that were involved in making the handle. Obviously, it needs to fit snugly in the two dados that are cut in the dividers, but I didn't want just a 
slip in fit there. So what we have and what you'll see on the plans is you'll create these shoulders here that allow the handle to kind of overlap those dados and conceal them a little bit. Now I did that at the table saw. You'll hold the piece upright using a miter gauge and then just nibble away the edges, taking small little bites at a time and then testing the fit in a dry assembled tote just to make sure that it's the right size. And again, I'm gonna put those in with some hide glue buttered on the ends here. Now to make the handle, you'll see that it has a cutout there, and I did that at the drill press using a Forstner bit just to define the two ends. And you can either stick with that Forstner bit and eat away the material in between or come back with a jigsaw and cut that out. Uh, once you've sanded that all smooth and then created a radius on the upper corners, then you can just go to the router table and soften those edges with an eighth inch roundover bit. Now you'll see I have a little bit of squeeze out here, but the nice part about hide glue is that it cleans up really easily. So what we can do now, flip everything over onto the bottom side, and the last piece to install is the bottom. Now the reason I did that is so that I could get a nice even fit all the way around on these pieces, and then I can actually run a bead of glue around the perimeter and then very lightly by the handle and the dividers. You'll remember also that when I routed the pocket for the bottom that it left rounded corners. So I came back with a chisel and a mallet and was able to square those up. Now the real key thing here though is you're working with some fragile end grain. So what you want to do is score across the grain first and then come back with the grain to nibble away the material so you can avoid some splitting there. Now I sized the bottom to be somewhat of a tight fit again so that I can drop it into place and then kind of wedge it a little bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna go get a damp rag and clean up some of this squeeze out, and then it's time for just some patience to let the glue dry. With the clamps off and the glue dry, it's ready to put this little tool tote to use. And you can see that it fits right on those hardboard runners that we installed when we made the toolbox for the TV show. And then very easily slides back and forth in it so you can still get to the items stored at the bottom of the toolbox. You know, one of the advantages of a project that's small like this is that it adds organization to another project, but it teaches you a lot of things along the way. A lot of the same lessons that you learn from building the toolbox will go into making the tool tote. So you get organization and a little way to hone your shop skills all at once too. So if you want, you can find the plans for this toolbox and the tote at our website, woodsmithplans.com. Otherwise, uh, we'd love to see what you make and how you might adapt it for your own situation. Thanks. Mm -hmm.